In this tutorial, I'm going to go over navigational operations on the Garmin G1000. We can start by looking at the top left where we will find the navigation frequency information. Here we can see that we've got the EMI VOR on the top for NAV1 and the Baltimore Washington VOR selected for NAV2. Now both these channels are in white because the HSI is currently looking at the GPS. However, if I hit the CDI soft key, it'll take me to VOR1 and I'll see VOR1 now turns green. And similarly, if I hit the CDI key again, I'll cycle through to VOR2 and now the Baltimore Washington VOR will become active. Keep in mind that the frequencies on the inside are the active frequencies and the standby frequencies are the ones on the outside. Now, <clears throat> I can manually tune the VOR frequency using this navigation knob over here. Right now we've got 109.00 on standby and I can adjust the frequency in megahertz with the outside knob and kilohertz with the inside knob. I can switch between them by pressing the center of this knob and we can see that right now the top one is listening in on the ID. If I hit this volume button, the ID goes away and if I rotate this volume button, I can adjust how loud or soft NAV1 is and I can do that independently for NAV1 and NAV2. Once I've selected the frequency to be tuned, I can switch between which one I want. So I could cycle up to NAV1 over here and then I can hit the uh, frequency swapping button over here to switch over between the frequencies that I want to have currently be active. <clears throat> now, it's important to keep in mind that we have just manually tuned the frequency, but it's also entirely possible for us to auto-tune a frequency from the multifunction display. Now, if you're going to auto-tune a frequency from a waypoint or from the nearest page and you're flying in route, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically put that frequency on the standby and then you can switch it to the active frequency. On the other hand, if you're doing an approach and you hit the auto tune button, it's going to automatically load the frequency that you just selected and pressed enter on into the active frequency field because when you're doing an approach the pace with which you have to work is going to be a little bit faster so it basically saves you a step from having to switch over the frequency but it's something important to keep in mind because when you load an approach maybe you're tracking a navigation frequency right now and you don't quite want to switch over to the first frequency on that approach then you might want to hold off before you use the autotune uh, capability because you're going to lose that frequency. But it's not a big deal because the old frequency you had will go on standby. So even if you hit it inadvertently and you don't quite want it yet, just hit the swap button and you'll go right back to the frequency you did want until you're ready for the frequency that you're tracking. So let's look right now and see how we can auto-tune a frequency. I'm going to switch over to the multifunction display. Here we're on Gaithersburg. Let's just go, we'll hit the FMS button. Let's go to the waypoint page and let's look at some VOR information. Actually, we'll go to the nearest page and then we'll go to VORs. I'll hit the VOR button so I can cycle through. And let's look at DCA. So we can see DCA is to the uh, southwest of us. And what we'll do is we'll hit We'll go up to DCA over here, then we'll hit the frequency button. Now we've got 111.00. Now look at my standby, it's 109.0. When I hit the enter button to auto-tune, it is now at 111.0, and if I hit the frequency swap, I now have DCA ready to go. So, let's see if we can do an approach and watch what will happen when we do that. So now let's pick an airport. We'll just go to a nearest airport in this case. I'll hit my airport list. 
I'll cycle down. And let's go to uh, KIAD, so Dulles International Airport. I'll hit Approach over here. So we got APR for approaches. Now we can see the different approaches. Let's pick one at random. Let's do Dulles ILS for runway 12. And I'm going to load the approach. And sure, I'll do vectors. That's fine. Hit enter. We'll skip the minimums for now. Now it says, do you want to activate the approach? I will hit yes for enter. Keep a careful eye on my frequencies. I've got 111.00 on my standby and I've got 117.90 on my active frequency for NAV1. So let's activate this approach and see where it puts the new frequency. Not approved for GPS, that's fine. We'll ignore that. Hit enter. Now 109.30 automatically went to the active frequency and the 117.90 got swapped over to the standby. And as I said before, Maybe I loaded this approach prematurely. I really want to keep 117.9, which was there before. Not a big deal. Just hit the swap button, and you're back to what you need to be. Very simple, very effective, and fast. <clears throat> so pretty much just like auto-tuning for the communications, anywhere you're able to put your cursor and highlight a frequency in terms of a navigation aid, all you have to do is hit Enter, and it will automatically put that approach in there for you. So now let's go back to the primary flight display and take a look at marker beacons. The marker beacon is what you will see as you're flying an instrument approach. You're going to have three beacons are the total possibilities. Some approaches might not have all of them. Some might have, but some might have all of them uh, on the opposite end. We've got the outer marker, which is going to show up over here, and it's going to be a blue square with an O in it. The middle marker will be another square, same location, but it will be yellow with an M for middle. And then the inner marker will be a white square with an I. Now, <clears throat> on the audio panel, there's a marker mute button and a high sensitivity button. All the high sensitivity button does is exactly what you would think it would do. It increases the sensitivity with which you can receive the marker beacon so it allows you to see it a little bit further away than you might normally uh, be able to. And so you can press that button to select or deselect it and there's a little enunciator light above the button which will light up to show you that you've enabled it. In addition to that we've got a marker mute button. If you press the marker mute button it will turn off the audio for the markers, but it will not turn off the indicators. So the outer, middle, and inner marker indicators, which come over here near the altimeter, those will always be there, but the audio will get turned off. And what's going to happen is it's going to turn off the audio for that first marker, but then once you get to the next marker tone, then it will come back on. So there's a, there's a slight subtlety to what's going to happen when you mute it. And if you press the button again, it will turn the mute button off and you'll hear all the markers that you happen to pass over. And last but not least, we have DME or distance measuring tuning. And we can see that by hitting the DME button over here. And right now we're selected on NAV1 for DME information. All we have to do is rotate the FMS knob. We can do NAV1, NAV2, or we can go to hold. And what hold will do is it's going to make the DME frequency remain paired with the last selected NAV frequency. So rather than having this be a little bit um, obscure, let's click the PDF button here and show DME information. So now you can see here DME is on NAV1, which is 109.30. Well, let's see if we can go to NAV2 for DME on Baltimore, which is 115.10. So I'll hit enter. And now you can see NAV2 is selected on the DME, and I've got 115.10, which is 23.6 nautical miles away. So this is how you change the information for DME, which is displayed over here on the uh, bottom left quadrant of the HSI. So that's really all there is to it in terms of the navigation um, operations on the Garmin G1000. It's pretty simple and straightforward and it parallels the communications operations very, very closely. And that's all there is to it.